let's compare all of Apple's M1 silicon, including the new M1 Ultra, complete with benchmarks. Welcome everybody to Apple Insider. It is Andrew here and you can find me on Twitter at Andrew underscore OSU. If you haven't done so already, please go ahead and subscribe and enable those notifications so you don't miss any of my videos. Now, today we are talking about Apple's silicon in the Mac line. I'm gonna compare all four of Apple's chips, including the M1, the M1 Pro, the M1 Max, and the all new M1 Ultra. We're gonna talk about the differences in these chips, the different performance that you'll see, including benchmarks across the board on all four of these processors. So let's go ahead and dive into all of this. All of Apple's chips in the M1 lineup are made using a five nanometer process. The M1 has an eight core CPU with four high performance cores and four high efficiency cores. The M1 Pro ups the ante with either an eight core or a 10 core CPU. And that gives you either six or eight high performance cores and two high efficiency cores. The M1 Max continues the trend with only that 10 core option and eight high performance cores and two high efficiency cores. The M1 Ultra is basically two M1 Max chips fused together. So what that means is you're gonna see double a lot of these figures. In this case, it is a 20 core CPU with 16 high performance cores and four high efficiency cores. If we look at GPUs, the M1 has either a seven or an eight core GPU, depending on your configuration. The M1 Pro goes further with either a 14 or a 16 core GPU option. The M1 Max goes again further with either 24 or a 32. And the M1 Ultra caps it all with either a 48 or a 64 core GPU, doubling that of the M1 Max. The M1, M1 Pro, and M1 Max all have a 16 core neural engine. The M1 was the first neural engine to come to the Mac, and the M1 Ultra doubles that of the M1 Max, giving you a 32 core neural engine. Another difference between the M1 chips is how much memory is supported. Apple uses a blazing fast unified memory architecture across the entire M1 lineup, and the M1 can be configured with either eight or 16 gigs of memory, the M1 Pro has either 16 or 32 gigs of memory. The M1 Max, now doubling again, goes with either 32 or 64 gigs of memory. And the M1 Ultra sits at the top with either 64 or 128 gigs of unified memory. Speaking of memory, Apple also increases the memory bandwidth, how fast it's able to access that memory as it moves up the scale. So for example, the M1 has about 68 gigabytes per second of memory bandwidth, while the M1 Pro has around 200, the M1 Max has 400, and at the top, the M1 Ultra has 800 gigabytes per second of memory bandwidth. Another difference is the media engines. The M1 lacks any known media engines, but if we go up to the M1 Pro, Apple does have a video encoding engine, a video decoding engine, as well as a single ProRes video encoding and decoding engine. The M1 Max doubles things from the M1 Pro, giving you two video encoding and decoding engines for ProRes, and the M1 Ultra, being two M1 Maxes, has four of each of those engines. What about external displays? The M1 is capable of usually outputting to one display at a time over USB-C or Thunderbolt. But if you have a Mac mini with a M1 chip on the inside, you can output to two displays. The Mac mini is the only M1 machine to contain an HDMI port. So you can do one over USB-C or Thunderbolt and a second display over HDMI. Then we go to the M1 Pro, which is found in things like the MacBook Pro. With the M1 Pro, you can output to two 6K displays at the same time. The M1 Max goes additional displays and you can do three 6K displays with an additional display over HDMI at 4K. And finally, we have the M1 Ultra, which can do four 6K displays and an additional 4K display when using HDMI. 
The only other difference that I want to mention with these chips is because the M1 Ultra is again two M1 Maxes. There's an additional support for more ports. So if we look at the Max Studio, one of the differences between the M1 Max version and the M1 Ultra version that the M1 Ultra version has additional Thunderbolt 4 ports in the front, where on the M1 Max, they're only USB-C on the front. Okay, let's go ahead and talk about performance. Through all of Apple's chips, we're gonna look at benchmarks for the M1, M1 Pro, M1 Max, and M1 Ultra. Starting off with the Geekbench single core benchmark, all four of the chips are getting their single core scores just below 1800. It makes sense because they are all effectively the same process, so their single core scores are going to be very similar, though we're seeing a slightly better performance on that M1 Ultra on a single core, but really the single core performance is going to be the same. You're gonna notice the biggest difference as we gain additional cores and on graphics. Looking at the multi-core Geekbench benchmark, the M1 comes in last, just above 6,500. The M1 Pro and M1 Max, when they're configured both with 10 cores, are getting very similar scores there. And the M1 Ultra basically doubles that. Again, it has a 20 core CPU in there, so it makes sense that it's basically double the performance of the 10 core M1 Pro or M1 Max. Finally, if we look at the graphics benchmark, the compute benchmark in metal, for all of Apple Silicon. The M1 coming in there with a 21,425. The M1 Pro with the 16 core GPU gets a 40,991. And the M1 Max in that 32 core GPU is getting a 71,614. If we follow that trajectory up, we can estimate where we're gonna see that M1 Ultra fall in with its 64 core GPU on that high end. Again, this is really gonna depend on things. We don't have benchmarks yet for that M1 Ultra because they have not been revealed. The machine is not out yet, but we can see the trajectory this is going up because this has been a very linear fashion. We're pretty much going to expect just below double that performance of the GPU on the M1 Ultra. So that is it. Thank you for making through that entire video of all the intricacies and performance differences and hardware differences between the M1, M1 Pro, M1 Max, and M1 Ultra processors. Apple's done an amazing job here, and I cannot wait to see what the Mac Pro holds, which is rumored to have four M1 Max chips in there, or basically two M1 Ultras. That's going to be insane because the benchmarks for the M1 Ultra are already mind blowing. So what do you guys think? Do you guys like these? And which chip are you eyeing for your next machine? Let me know down below in the comments or better yet over on Twitter at Andrew underscore OSU. By the way, we have exclusive deals on the 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pros with Apple Silicon on the inside. You can get up to $300 off plus additional savings on Apple Care. Use those links down below in the description to get more information. Otherwise, stay tuned. Got lots more videos heading your way.